Hello and welcome, my name is Lino Tadros from Falafel Software and in this video we'll be showing you how to use the new shadow navigation widget from Falafel Software for Sitefinity 4.4. When you get actually the package you'll end up with a zip file and this zip file if you open it up um, you will have a widget directory, a navigation directory and inside of there you'll have all your resources, a readme file that is very important to see how to install the system and some examples of the CSS and the JavaScript that you can use for the, uh, the shadow navigation. And the idea behind the shadow navigation, instead of using a lot of markup for your menus and tab strips, you can use a very simplistic HTML and style it however you'd like. Especially if you're a designer, you might like some uh, specific CSS files or JavaScript or jQuery that you'd like to use for your navigation system. And that would make it extremely easy to dress your navigation up. Alrighty? So let's go ahead and open up the README file to see what it says. Uh, in here, it, there is an explanation for uh, what the product is all about. And also shows you exactly how to install it. So most important is that you will have to include the entire directory of widgets at your root of your website. Again, we're not giving you any assemblies or DLLs. You will have all the files so you can manipulate them uh, however you'd like as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to leave this uh, README file open so you can see exactly um, how you can use some of the examples at the bottom in here for CSS's and JavaScript file. Um, and of course, you can always have your own as well. Alrighty. So let's go in here. I'm going to extract all these files in here. Let's go ahead and put them in a specific directory. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to right click on my widget and we'll copy it into the clipboard. Now, if I go to uh, Visual Studio, for instance, you will notice in here, let me go ahead and stop running this website. This is a simple Sitefinity web application that I've already started. And the main idea, you will go into the main um, solution um, project in here. I'm going to go ahead and paste this entire directory. And there it is. There is my widget. There is my navigation. And, of course, all my resources here for JavaScript files, for images, uh, style sheets for CSSs and templates. And you can, of course, add your own in these resources as well. All right. The main control in here is the shadow navigation.ascx. That's the main control that will be displaying the navigation system inside Finity. And at this point in here, there are two things that you, it's very important for you to do. One of them is in resources under JavaScript, this file called shadow navigation designer.js. In the build action at the bottom in here, folks, you'll have to change it from content to embedded resource. Okay, that's one of them. And the second one for templates, there will be the main control for the designer called Shadow Navigation Designer of ASCX has to have the same thing exactly as well. So we're going to go ahead and change it from content to embedded resource. And at this point, you are done. We can actually save that. We can run the site. It will compile the whole thing all together. And it will start it in my default browser, which is Chrome at this point. And the site started. And right now, I can actually go to the back end by saying slash sitefinity. And in the back end in here, I will need to, first of all, uh, register this new widget into the toolbox system. So I'm going to go to administration, settings. And we'll turn on advanced tab here for the, uh, for the settings. And all the way at the bottom in here, we'll see the toolboxes. And we can choose actually which area we'd like to, uh, to register this uh, specific widget. We'll go into the page controls, for example, under sections. And we can actually, for right now, put it under the content toolbox section. Alrighty? So under tools in here, these are all the different widgets available on the main content area. And I'm going to add a brand new one. We'll say create new. And here is asking you for the control type. This usually is a pass to a specific assembly in your referenced uh, bin directory or a physical pass to a specific ASCX control. If you open up the README, we have this very simple for you in here in step number three. We're giving you exactly what the pass is to that control type. So you can copy this from this file if you, of course, installed it in exactly the same directory that we suggested to begin with. So we'll go back in here. I'm going to paste it right there. That's the correct pass, and you can give it whatever name you want. In my case, in here, we'll call it Shadow Nav, and the title will be Shadow Nav. All right, we can leave the rest right now empty. We'll save the changes, and now our new widget is uh, automatically registered with Sitefinity installation in here. Let's go back to our pages, and on the pages in here, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new page. 
and we'll call this page, for instance, uh, Shadow Nav, and we're going to use any template that we want. We'll say Shadow Nav, like that. And let's choose something, for instance, as wide as possible just to show you the feature. I'm going to use this one in here, which is one column with header and footer. We'll say done there. I'm going to create this, uh, this page. All right. Now notice here in the content area for the widgets, we have a new control or a new widget here called Shadow Navigation. Let me go ahead and drag this and put it all the way at the top in here. By default, it will actually read the sitemap uh, automatically from Sitefinity and will show you all the names of the pages that are uh, automatically um, published to be shown in navigation will be all shown in here as if it was a panel, uh, uh, panel bar on the left side. But of course, you can actually dress it up however you'd like. I'd like to show you the designer for this control now. If I click on Edit in here, you see there is a lot of things that you can do. First of all, you can select which node you want to start with. If you leave it empty, it will read the sitemap directly from the beginning from the root. Or you can start from a specific one of the pages and read all the children underneath there if you'd like. You can render as a numeric list or else for the HTML markup if you'd like. You can also include sub-menu items. You can decide on that. The third one is a very important one, which is to render pages based on view permissions. So maybe you would like to, um, to accept the permissions given to a specific group of people. So you can actually exclude or include specific pages. You can render the pages that are hidden. Again, this is a feature that... Um, if you actually say show in navigation is false on the regular navigation system, it will not show, but this control will even allow you to see all the hidden ones, even though they are not shown in navigation, if you'd like as well. We can also append clear both a div at the end of the menu. Again, for a lot of designers, this can be very important. The nice thing about this control is that it will allow you to pass any style sheet, any CSS file that will dress up this menu. So we can give you some... Uh, examples in the readme file to, to choose some that we included automatically but the uh, the sky is the limit any css file that you like or you developed or you like on another website you can bring in the css file and it will dress up the specific shadow navigation however you'd like the nice thing also that you can bring in a jquery plugin for the menu uh, to bring in some animation do whatever you want just bring in the js file and the system automatically will load it if you pass it on this line some of these JavaScript code will need to be invoked. You can have a, a JavaScript code to invoke the plugin itself, maybe by a click or a hovering or whatever. So you can have another JavaScript code here to invoke it as well. So there is a lot of different features that you can do automatically from the outside, if you would like. The right side of the screen here for the designer, uh, you can include the search box. A lot of times we find customers saying, in my menu, I'd like to have the search box to be part of the menu on the right side, for instance. I don't want it to be a different placeholder. I want it to be part of the menu. And now you can do that. We can actually turn it on, and you can choose any of your search indexes. This will read automatically all the search indexes in the system, and you can choose which one will do that. Of course, you can choose your re search result page whatever it is, and you can choose your own CSS class to how you're going to dress this up as well. So all the stuff is available for you at this point. If you open up the readme file, at the bottom in here we've included some CSS files and some JavaScript from jQuery that will help you understand and see the visualization of this shadow uh, navigation control. Let's go ahead and use some of these examples. Of course, this is not the only way you can do it. You can have your own, as I said, this is fully uh, customizable. I'm going to Get the CSS file, we're going to put it in here, paste it right there, and let's go, for instance, in here and get the uh, jQuery for the drop-down. Control-C this, we'll go in here, we'll put it right there. And in here, I can actually uh, use the CSS class, by the way, if you open the CSS file that we just brought in called menu.css, there would be a light blue uh, class, there will be a black class. Uh, you can add your own as well. So if I say the drop down in here and I can say something like uh, black, like this, I would be able to draw this entire menu in black. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll say save and we'll say publish. And if we see our new shadow navigation now, now we have dressed the entire uh, menu based on our CSS file. So it only borrowed the sitemap from the system. Again, you might want to tweak the CSS because maybe the search is uh, um, 
position absolute, for instance, you might want to change the CSS. Maybe there is a couple of pixels in here. Again, all these things are CSS related. This is not the widget that will actually uh, force this to be drawn however you'd like. But as you can see, this was automatically was able to, to build all that on the fly, put the search inside of here, and it will work correctly. Uh, and I can even change it some more if you'd like. Let's go back in here and say I would like to use the light blue one, for instance, if I want to. We'll edit that. So instead of black, I believe there is another one we included called light blue. And we'll say save that. And there you go, that's the light blue. Again, just to give you an example, just go ahead and try to change the CSSs or add your own classes, and you'll see this automatically showing uh, really well. The nice thing about this, with the same exact control, you can actually make it uh, horizontal or vertical so that you can actually have it in a panel bar, for instance, or something like this on one of the pages of the site. So it will work very well as well. You will notice also, if I go to uh, Visual Studio, we have included some other styles. Notice I've used the menu.css, but there is another one called JD menu.css that we have used. And there is a JD menu.javascript. You can also use those. So let's go ahead and make that change really quickly just to show you how that will work. I'm going to edit this guy. And instead of menu.css, let's put JD. And in here, we'll put... JD menu dot CSS, uh, dot JS. Oops, there you go. Put a dot in here. And here for the drop down, as a matter of fact, I want to remember what the name of the CSS class is. If you don't remember, of course, the best way is to open up the JD menu dot CSS and it will show you the name of the, uh, of the class, which is JD underscore menu. So let's go back and use this as JD underscore menu. And we'll say save and let's see how this looks. All right, we'll say publish this. And we'll view it. And there you go. This is a perfectly clean um, navigation system inside Finity with the search built into it and everything. And none of that stuff actually have any markup for red controls or tab strips or anything like that. This is all HTML with CSS automatically. So if you view this in the source, for instance, in here, the entire system will be extremely simple, as you can see in here. This is a very, very simple menu with not uh, hundreds of lines of markup or anything like that. So you can definitely uh, manipulate it however you would like from your CSS file and JavaScript. Hopefully this was useful to you and uh, you can start using it for free and enjoying it. Thank you so much.